why wasn't Tagalog a necessity to teach your kids? I'm not saying, I'm just saying oh, that. I don't mean no, that. Just, <laughs> no, no. She loves her heritage. She loves the country. She loves the people. I, I would think that the, the people that reject that are, are, you know, they're angry, they're insecure. Right? On today's episode of the Wine Down Podcast, we have a special guest. He is a veteran of the U.S. high-tech industry who relocated his family to the Philippines in order to revisit his entrepreneurial roots. Today, he is here to talk about raising a family in the Philippines and what it's like living here as a foreigner. Without further ado, please welcome Joe. What was this? What's, what's this, guys? I was just coming back from the CR. I'm just, I'm just going to work. What? Well, thank What's you so on? much, Joe, for joining our podcast, and we really do appreciate your presence. And basically, we just wanted to get your thoughts and your decision making as to why you chose the Philippines as your hub and as the place to raise your kids. And uh, yeah, uh, your kids. Your kids. Uh, by kids. the way, guys, this is my dad. Just to whoa, show my wait a minute, what? <laughs> this is the first time hearing this. <laughs> Shit! Another one! Father. Another oh. one! <laughs> yes, I, I forgot to tell oh. you. I forgot to tell you before this interview. Uh, that's why this interview is very important to me. Self <laughs> <Soft> story. <laughs> First question is why did you choose the Philippines? Uh, I met Chase's mom. We were both in college together. And uh, we met in college and then we started dating after college. Mm -hmm. And for a few years we lived together, and then we got married. Actually, in Boston we got married, and uh, we had a reception in New York, and we came here to have a reception and to meet the family. And uh, then I think like every two years we would come back. Mm. Okay. So you know it, it was that that's how I that's how I got to know the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then. I, I used to work for Intel, and my, my original, career-wise, uh, I started out in various startup companies, high-tech startup companies in the States, which are always small groups mm -hmm. of people trying to, you know, trying to, trying to achieve something. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, by the time I was working at Intel, um, I had decided I wanted to go back to the small company environment. So, in order to do that, and also uh, having already visited the Philippines, yeah. I knew what it was like here. And so, uh, when I left Intel, I started, you know, small companies here in the Philippines using the Philippines as a back office. Right now, the reason behind that is like it, it's very common, right, for for foreigners coming here to set up businesses. It's because of the, the difference in wages, right? Yeah. Mm. And so, mm. for me, it was feasible to try different businesses here because the, the costs were a lot less, yeah. mm. right? So I could sort of incubate businesses here, see which ones were working, yeah. which ones weren't, and not just you know lose everything. Right? I could afford to do that. Yeah. So that, that's basically how I started. I would fly back and forth here, and every time I'd come here, I bring a kid with me, so uh, you know. I have Any three, kid, or just like, like you know, three like children, random, five random children. Random kid. <laughs> um, or your kids. <laughs> the oldest being Hunter and Chase, mm -hmm. and no, I don't think I, I I traveled here with Avery because she was too young. Mm. Um, so I would bring Hunter with me for a few weeks while I was doing business here, and then I'd go back, or I'd bring Chase with me, and then I'd go back. You know, and it, it was actually easy here because of all the relatives here. Yeah. Mm. Right. So it, it wasn't like I was traveling with a kid and then bringing him to a hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leaving him up to the, the hotel staff. Take care of my kid for the day. You know. Yeah. It was always with you know Lola or one of the titas or something like. Yeah. That. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always get this question every time you know I meet a Filipino, but I should be half. But just out of curiosity, what was your first? Impression. impression. I was going to ask that. When you first, like, for your first visit or time in the Philippines. I think everyone was super friendly. Everyone was, like, super happy to meet me, kind of yeah. thing, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So it feels really good. Uh, actually, a quick story about that. My, my first trip to the Philippines, um, like I said, everyone was super friendly, super nice, mm -hmm. everything else. 
after going to the Philippines, we took a quick trip to Hong Kong. Okay. Now, I grew up in New York, in New York City, right? Um, going from Manila to Hong Kong at that time, in the, the mid-90s, um, Hong Kong, the people were cold, mm. that they, they, they really didn't, you know, I mean, I, I got lost in Hong Kong and I had a card with a hotel address on it in, yeah, in Mandarin yeah. and English, right? So I walked up to a, poli a police officer. <laughs> I said, I'm lost, can you help me? And I held up the card and he pretended he didn't see me. I mean, I was literally this close, I held the card this close in his face. I'm like, hello, can you help me? Hello, hello, and he was just doing this. And all the people in the stores were cold and everything yeah, else. So yeah. it, was, it was such a big, at That's least at difference. that time, yeah. Hong Kong at that time. Yep, yep. It, it was a huge contrast from the Philippines where everyone was so nice and sweet. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the, what I said at the time is that like, wow, Hong Kong feels more like New York. Because, mm. you know, that at home at that time. I don't, I don't know about now. I haven't lived there in a while, but at that yeah. time, you know, you walk down the streets, people are, are pretty cold unless they want something. Mm. That's it. Okay. You know? Yeah. And I just want to pick up on something that you said earlier. So you said you met um, Chase's mom in college, and then you got married after college. Yeah. But then after you got married, then you visited the Philippines to meet the family. So you got married. Oh, we before? we had two receptions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got married in the states. Uh, we had a reception in New York, and then we had a reception here. But you got married before actually meeting her whole family. Yes. Okay, because that's usual. That's interesting because usually. You know, mm. just based on the foreigners that I know who's married Filipinas, it's they make it a thing to visit the family first and then get married. I'm not saying I'm just saying oh, like I don't no, know. I'm, no, no. <laughs> I'm just saying like how saying? I'm just saying how was that? Like how did the family like you know receive okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Real quickly, when we were in Boston, Korean, when Korean and I were in Boston, um, we lived together, right? And her parents would come and visit, and we would keep. The fact that we lived together is secret. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. And her parents were staying with her, with us, but they didn't know it. Right? <laughs> and it, it happened that the, the place where we lived was a duplex mm -hmm. and it had two doors. The main door with the, the kitchen yeah. living room and then the, the bedroom. And then downstairs was one bedroom and it had another door. Wait, so you hid? So <laughs> I would, for, for every visit that they came, <laughs> I would sneak out, I'd get dressed, I'd sneak out to the bottom door, I'd come around to the front door, knock, oh. greet them all for the day. We'd all spend the day together going around doing everything yeah. else, and then at night I'd say good night, and I'd walk out, I'd go down, and I'd sneak in the, bound, the downstairs. Wait, uh, wait, whose idea was, who, who, who's, who's idea well, was your this? Well, your, mo your mom, I guess, I mean, I mean, my parents wouldn't have minded, uh, mm. but for, you know, Filipino family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This was before we were married. Before we were married, it was, you know, yeah. you know kind of not cool to do that. And so, yeah, so we, we, we faked it. It was actually really funny. Good night, good night, good night. <laughs> we'd, even, we'd even do the thing where she'd start the shower, she'd take the shower, and then she wouldn't turn it off so I could sneak in so it wouldn't sound <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah, two showers yeah. going. You guys had this all planned out. We were sophisticated. <laughs> how long did that last? Like, how, what was the longest time that they actually stayed in, like, and visited? They would stay for like a week or two. Okay, months. I thought it was like oh, months. Like, months. Like, like, not months, no. Okay. They, they would just come and visit and then they'd come back here. Okay, yeah. all right. I mean, being that consistent for but two we, weeks we though, that. it's yeah. still impressive. Yeah. All right, and speaking about family, so would you say that, you know, so right now you're in the Philippines, but when you met Chase's mom, did you notice like a difference in culture? I mean, you know, like like an obvious difference okay, in we, culture. When when I met her, she had already been in the states for at least three years. Okay. Or four mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was it was in the states. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, maybe there were some differences, but she had already adapted there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, and you guys didn't even date until a few years later, right? Yeah, we met and then we dated a few years later. So, so it was even mm. later than that when you guys were dating. <coughs> yeah. And that's pretty unique though, because like most of, again, the people that I know, they come here, meet the, meet the, the Filipino. Filipino, and then take them back. Where yeah. with your case, you was already living there. So that's kind yeah. of I'll, unique. I'll, I'll be honest, uh, for, for me growing up, there were, and I didn't know this at the time, honestly. Growing up, I didn't know much about the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in my school, 
in my, my high school, there was one Filipino family. I didn't even know they were Filipino. <laughs> yeah. I knew they kind of had Spanish last names, yeah, 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 yeah. even first names, but like they look kind of Asian. I didn't know. Yeah. But in my nature, I, I don't usually ask, I don't poke and prod people, so I don't mm -hmm. ask. Yeah. So entire high school, I never knew. I even took the girl to, the, to her prom. She asked me to her prom, and I took oh. her to her prom, and I didn't know she was from, you know, You never okay? came to like, so where are you from? <laughs> it never, never struck me, okay? This is how clueless I was. Okay. And then, even in college, there was another girl, same thing. I'm like, oh, I look at her, her last name oh, is Hernandez, bad. and I'm like, huh, I wonder where she's from, but I never asked her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Isn't is it like a good thing to ask, though? Like. It's just me. I have this you, you just had no you know. interest in her, you know? <laughs> I, he didn't care, though. No. He didn't care. He didn't I, care. I, don't, I don't ask unless people offer. It's no, no, a no, weird no, no, thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Because Filipinas, they can pass out, like, it's Spanish, Mexicans, like, I mean, no. Yeah, you know, I, I, so I couldn't Chinese, figure it out. I'm like, yeah. all right, Spanish name. They're kind of a mix of a lot Doesn't of things. Doesn't look Latino, kind of yeah, looks Latino, yeah. but a little Asian, uh, you know. <laughs> okay, okay. I didn't know. The comments over the past few videos that we had, one of them like main like topics or main question was why wasn't Tagalog um, a necessity to teach your kids? Oh, why wasn't oh, it part of my why was I, I'm going to get in trouble let's get into this, this one. Well, let's get into this okay. Okay. What are you getting in trouble with? <laughs> the, the honest truth, the honest truth. I wanted all three kids. Even we were living in the States. We, got, we met, we got married in the States. We we're living in the States. I wanted all three children to speak Tagalog. Okay, this is in the U.S. And the only way, when we, we did it, I did research, Korean did research. Um, the, the best way to make that happen would be if, you know, their mom at home spoke mm -hmm. to them in Tagalog only and mm -hmm. required them to answer back. Because sometimes if it's one way, the, yeah, the kids yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, like My father's like that, right? He understands. The, lang the Czech language, but he doesn't speak it. Mm -hmm. So it had to be a two-way thing. And it just, I guess life got busy, you know, I was working, she was working too at first. Mm -hmm. um, and it just became difficult. And so they didn't learn Tagalog when they were little. Again, living in the States. So they were initially growing up in the States. And then um, when, the, when the oldest one was ready to go to school, um, I did, and maybe Karina did too, really wanted them to have a second language. You know, mm -hmm. I, I personally believe it's important just, just to have the brain pathways yep, to yep, speak yep. multiple languages, right? Um, and so, okay, Tagalog was out because their mom wasn't going to speak to <laughs> <laughs> them at all. It's their mom's fault. <laughs> yeah, she, I mean, it's okay. She's in the States, she worked with, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so we, uh, at the time, we were in Portland, Oregon, so we were looking around for a good, you know, uh, language school. And at the time, the, the best one was the French American School in Portland. Mm -hmm. And so they were enrolled there. And so they, they actually, and it's, it's full French, full French immersion. And um, so they, the, all three of them went to the French school. Well, the, the, David was too young, but they went to the French school in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, when we moved here, they, they they had to continue. I thought they had to continue, and so they were enrolled in the the European the uh, EIS and EIS, EIS, EIS. European International School yeah. in the French school. So they, when they were first here for the first few years, they mm -hmm. went to the French school. Again, total French immersion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Else. Okay. Yeah. Well, know? I guess I'm curious in your opinion. Then, do you think it's like a fair thing to say? When someone's like, let's say for Chase, for example, that you know he doesn't speak Tagalog, right? Yeah. So he shouldn't be considered as Filipino. A lot of people, when we interviewed Hannah, a lot of people felt it was a bit, you know, disingenuous when she said that she's Filipina by heart. She feels Filipina by heart because she's not necessarily fluent at Tagalog. Now she's a lot better than me. She she, she loves her heritage. Yeah. Yeah. She loves the country. She loves the people. I mean, I I would think that. The, the people that reject that are, are you know, the, the, they're angry, they're insecure, right? Mm. Mm. I mean, if, if someone tells you, I love you, 
then you accept them, right? You go, yeah. okay, you, you accept them. You don't reject them just because, oh, you know what, I don't like your shoes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's just very, very silly good reasons. Very, very mm-hmm. good point. Yeah. yeah, I kind of agree with the part, like, I'm not sure, again, I can't say it's the same thing for everyone, but insecurity plays a big role in that. But like, you know, since you've moved here, and how long have you been in the Philippines? Like, the reason I was asking is because, like, I wanted to get your opinion, you know, being a white male. And oh, you can say the W word, I don't mind. <laughs> uh, I'll let you say it. Only today, though, okay? <laughs> what I was asking is, like, do you think there's white privilege in the Philippines? Okay. And do you think that you also uh, see that? Okay, yes. absolutely, mm-hmm. yes. Okay. And how would Absolutely. you, why would you say, like, how do you... Okay, you know? Be, because, well... Yes, as a foreigner, people immediately look at... And, and, and look, I'm not, I'm not saying this as a put-down or anything like that, right? Um, in my personal experience and the experience of 100% of my friends who are foreigners, uh, when you come here, people tend to look at you and think that you're affluent. They think you have money, right? They also look at you as just exotic, right? You're different, mm-hmm. right? If you grew up and you know in a small place in a province, then you yeah. come to Manila, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you encounter foreigners who look, act, and, and talk differently than yeah. you do. That's Kind of cool. It's, it's different. Look, the, the same thing happens in the states, right? In the U.S., we're a melting pot. We have a lot of people. Yeah. However, if you know, and I remember this in school growing up, we had this British kid get enrolled in our school with a heavy, but a posh, a posh British accent. Yeah. So he yeah. sounded like the people in the movies. To yeah, us. yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. And so immediately, all the girls were like. <laughs> yeah. they, were, they were just yeah, like yeah. drawn to him they, they were just like they wanted to meet him they wanted to know him they were, you know and the, the rest of us just you know local <laughs> boys we were like what? what's going on? you know we were confused we were like hey you know I love that you pointed that out because that kind of, kind of like explains that it's not really a unique thing to the Philippines like just like I feel the, some of the local guys get left out because of you know Filipina girls tend to date foreigners and the local guys, but as you mentioned, like when you were in school and a British guy came, more the girls tend to flock towards someone who's different, exotic, as you would say. Yeah. So I guess it's not yeah. a unique yeah. thing to the Filipino. It's a human it's thing. It's, it's not, a human yeah. thing, yeah. yeah. It's a human thing. You, you, yeah. You look at something different as exotic. And, yep, you know. yep, yep. Yeah. I, I mean... But, but yeah, to answer your question, for, for sure, yeah. yeah. So, so they, because of those reasons, you know, people tend to think they have money. Mm-hmm. Um, you're different, right? That's the main reason you're different. It's not. I mean, sorry, I did mention the money thing, but it's not. It's not all. It's not all about that, right? It's, it's mainly because you're different, right? Yeah. People will. St- people here will still be friendly to you without any expectations, mm-hmm. right? They'll just be friendly because oh, you're a foreigner. It's kind of cool. It's kind of neat. You know what I mean? Yeah. People do find you different and exotic, and so. You know, many people they treat here you differently. will be friendly yeah. and they'll be courteous. They'll they'll go out of their way. Yeah, yeah. To, yeah. You know, oh, have you tried this fruit? Yeah, have you yeah, tried yeah, this yeah, food? Yeah. As opposed you know, to, and that's purely because you know you're someone who's different, and they 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 get a tickle out of it. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Would you say this like? Do you think it's sort of like a general thing that everyone does this, or like only specific people, or is it like a as a Filipino people they they all think this way? Or feel this way about foreigners, generally, in your experience? Not everyone. I, I honestly, I have encountered a few people that don't like foreigners. Was that your question? Well, so, somewhat. I, yeah, I have encountered yeah. a few people that don't like foreigners. But to be fair, it, it's so much less. Yeah. Yeah. Than even for me back home, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. In, in New York, mainly, you know, the, the the East Coast, right? So I grew up in New York and went to school in Boston, right? So that's. All East Coast is kind of the same attitude. It's not the not exactly the same. Not, not exactly the same, but you know, there's a lot of uh, it's a rough, mm. cold. It's a rough yeah. culture, right? Now the United States is huge, huge, and there are many different cultures in the U.S. 
So when I moved to the West Coast, to Portland, Oregon, everyone was super friendly. Mm. It was like a different breed of, of America. Yeah. <laughs> and I was not used to it because I grew up in a different environment, yeah, yeah. right? And so, but, but having said that, here, here in Manila, um, most of the people are friendly. There, there are a few that aren't, but it's, it seems to be a lot less than yeah. in mm. other countries. In other countries, you, you have people yeah. who are so against, you know, especially yeah. now with all the hate yeah. being riled up. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. Oh, these, these immigrants are taking our job. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So from, from that point of view, I think that's worse in other countries, okay. including the U.S. It's worse. Mm. Okay. I'm curious though, like when you moved here initially, did you have trouble adjusting? Yeah, one of the things that, and I know you guys have talked about it in the other, in the other videos, please watch them, in the yes. other videos. Um, for me, one of the things that was interesting and, and it's sort of like, I fell into a few times, and I still, it still happens to this day, um, just because someone can speak your language doesn't mean that they have the same cultural background. Mm. Uh -huh. It doesn't mean that they have the same comprehension as you do. They, it doesn't mean they have the same understanding that you do, right? Mm. And so when I first came here, I fell into sort of this trap where I thought someone understood me because yeah. they, they knew the words. Yeah, yeah, they responded yeah, appropriately. Yeah. They just didn't understand the reference mm. or the context that, yep. yeah, you know, yeah. But what I noticed early on is, okay, all right, for, for example, right, and again, getting back to where I come from, the East Coast, the, the, the Northeast of U.S., kind of, a, you know, everyone's mm -hmm. on edge, everyone's like rough, you know. Mm -hmm. When I went back for a visit a few years ago, I thought, oh, I was in, in, in outside Grand Central Station, and my brother was picking us up, and... I thought, wow, you know, things have changed. Things are really different. There's not a Sunday. There's no traffic. <laughs> and we're loading my bags into my brother's car. The street is empty. There's no one. There's no traffic on this at this time on a Sunday. A guy on a bicycle, on a bicycle, comes riding down this empty street. And there's lots of room. And he goes, get the fuck out of the road, will you? Someone I've never met. Someone, I, And for me, it was like... Yep, it's still the same. <laughs> yep, still the same. You know what I mean? Uh, good to be back. <laughs> yeah. It's good to okay. be back. Anyway, so, so, so one of the things that I grew up with is like if I wanted to like uh, a store in New York, all of the, the, the workers in the store would always be like watching me to see if I'm going to steal something. <laughs> Constantly. Or they'd follow me around. Yeah. Right? Could you just... Yeah, I'm, I'm a shifty looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sketch. <laughs> and so I grew up with that. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also grew up with a turning around to the, the helper and say, what the fuck do you think? Do you think I'm going to take something? You know, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. fighting back, right? Yeah. So, picture this. This is my mindset. This is like deep, deep within my psyche. I came to Manila and I went to SM where they have a thousand salespeople walking around <laughs> who will follow you around, who will even go, how about this, sir? how about that? Do you want a rubber duck? How about this rubber duck, sir? How about this, how about this? So for me, when I first came here, that, I was like so, I was like just furious. I'm like, what do you think, I'm gonna steal something? You think? And, and these salespeople would be like, no, no, sir, no, sir. And I look at them and I'm like, it, it took me, it took a while for it to yeah, click in my yeah. head. I'm like, oh, he's not harassing me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like back home, it would mean that the guy was yeah, harassing yeah, me. Yeah. But here it didn't mean the same thing at all. Mm. Uh, totally yeah. different cultural yeah. context, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. The guy was really trying to be helpful. He <laughs> thought I wanted that rubber duck. <laughs> or whatever, whatever yeah, I wanted. Yeah, yeah. Whatever I wanted, he yeah. wanted to be the one to help me find it. Yeah. And yeah. that would make him feel good. Mm. In yeah. a totally different place from where where you like we're used to <laughs> where I came from, you know. Yeah, interesting, very, very interesting. Yeah. And I agree, I agree. Because, like, for example, culture, right? In Nigeria with Liz and I, 
we can say something like we can say the same thing but it can mean something very different to like a Filipino person because it's just like the jokes and the like you know the like the way we talk I guess like every time me and Becca are talking and let's say an Nigerian accent people always think we're, we're fighting. fighting for some reason it just really because, does sound uh, like you guys are fighting but we're not but yeah but just like Filipinos are more like you know, happy and you know so I, 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 I that. from an American's perspective it sounds like you're fighting it's not just Filipinos <laughs> And anyways, <laughs> point is, uh, or I just like how we say things, like sometimes we're very transparent, but I don't mean that with any bad intent. I'm just like, all right, this is this and this is that. And they're like, oh, are you mad? I'm like, no, I'm just, I mean, usually they're not really confrontational and they're just like used to like joking around. So sometimes if you don't like use an emoji or say, ha ha, they automatically think you're mad. Uh-huh. And that's like something I always like at work. It's something I also had to like. Yeah. Deal with with you know mm. colleagues, but you know you get you get used to it and stuff. Yeah. And so there's a different yeah. way of expressing your yeah, feelings. And yeah, stuff. they're yeah. more you know like warm and they're more like you know hugs and warm. less or, or let's not talk about it kind of thing. Yeah, they kind of don't like you know like confrontation. Mm. Well, like uh, another thing here is staring is not a big deal. Oh, that, <laughs> yep, yes, yep, yeah, that, yeah. But again, yeah. back back home. I mean, you, you, we're, we're walked, we walk down the street, we're looking at the ground. We're looking at our feet, we're looking at the ground, we're looking at our stuff. Uh, you look at someone in the eye, they get pissed, they get angry. If you hold the look, oh, they'll be like, what the fuck are you looking at? What the fuck are you looking at, right? So that was another thing for me here, coming here. Yep. It's just like being stared at. Mm. You know, I mean, if someone's staring at you with a smile, it's a bit different. Yeah. I'm talking about just someone just like dead eyes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you I, know I, what I mean? I can yeah. relate. I can yeah. relate. It's that particular stare yeah. that, like, when I first came yeah. here, I was so offended by it. I was just like, "What? <laughs> what is it?" And they're still like, "I'm like, is there a problem?" <laughs> and so many times the face went like from this to. <laughs> exactly. Oh hi sir, no, nothing. And, yeah. and I was shocked. I'd be like, I feel like my brain would like yeah, cease. Yeah. I'm like, I totally misunderstood that. I yeah. I completely didn't understand what that was about. Yeah. Because culturally that meant something totally different to yeah. me, but here I mean it didn't. Yeah, as you said, it, it it saw it. Here it was just innocent. The guy's just like it. hanging out. <laughs> Staring, you know, like, I guess he yeah, does. No. That's a fun pastime, I guess. I don't know. That's something that me and Becca really had to get used to, especially where we grew up. Until now. Only until black now. people. So like eyes just everywhere. To be honest, until now I, I still get uncomfortable I mean, when people stare at me. But I understand why. And no and they point too. They're like I, uh, and the parents encourage the kids to point you like, oh look kid like a black person and you're like what uh, but then you, I, I get remember, it I get it I when, get we were, it. when we were going to um, what was the beach uh, not, not you know the for the team building mm. we went to two we went to two the second one the second one so Laguna no Batangas Batangas like, yeah. we we're, were headed to Batangas and we stopped for some Lomi oh yeah and then there was some there was like a, a kid there and you guys like oh no 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 and like cuz the parents like oh look go go say like you know go go look go look go point at them like they were doing, they were actually doing that i saw it traumatized i get traumatized sometimes yeah. but or when we were in the elevator and they like or i was with i was with Liz and we were in the elevator of like Fort Victoria and uh, they just the mom was like oh go touch the hair like no. they, the mom told the kid to touch the hair that's, it, like, that's why I don't blame kids when they do that because in Nigeria, like we, you know, we consider mm. that rude. But like I said, cultural yeah. differences. So I just mm. try to understand. Yeah. Even though I've been here for like how many years, I still try to understand yeah. that. Yeah. Like, yeah. It know. is. It is a. It is something where they don't know. They don't think of it as rude, and yeah. so you can't really. Yeah, fall you, them. you just have to adjust. You just yeah. have to adjust. When I first came here, and we went to like some real provincial areas. The little kids would come up to me and. They would like they just yeah, see my they white would, walk, like, would yeah. come off. <laughs> Same with black. They'd be yeah. like this, the little oh, kids. Yeah. Really? And you can't like and really little, so they're really curious. You know. Yeah. And I get it. Mm-hmm. I mean, especially if it's a province, you don't see that a lot. You don't meet a lot of white people, so you're like, oh, okay, or black people, like, oh, it's only black whites. I get it, but it's still kind of. It, it, it can still be kind of ca- it catches jarring. you off guard sometimes. It's a sort of jarring experience. It can be yeah. tiring. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. Like, it is. Imagine like 13 years of You, you feel uncomfortable or like, I just want to relax. Yeah, exactly, right? If you're having a bad day and then someone does that, you're like... Well, you know, which oddly, like I was talking about going from Manila to Hong Kong, right? Mm. 
one of the things that I actually like at that time, at that time, I don't, Hong Kong's probably very different now, right? This was before uh, they were part of China. The lease went up and they were returned <laughs> to China, right? Um, they, were, they were still British, right? Mm, okay. And uh, uh, having been in Manila for a few weeks, I was exhausted from being stared at. And when we went to Hong Kong, everyone ignored me, and I actually appreciated right? it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I felt, yeah. I was like, <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no right. one acknowledges my existence. <laughs> this is wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm right in the middle of a crowded street, everyone's walking by. No one looked at me, no one cared. Yeah. Yeah. I felt so good. I was like, ah, oh, this feels right. like home. Oh. Yeah. It also felt like New York. Like, exactly, oh, exactly. This is nice. No, no. no, I could probably collapse right here, and they will just step over. Me. They won't stop. Oh. Yeah, they'll stop. Yeah. Oh, they'll they'll stop on you. They'll stop on you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for the most part, like because when we went to Singapore, it was the same. So it was refreshing, but you still, I still somehow miss like you know just the hospital. Hospitality. Hospitality. Hospitality of the food there, because the, the there's a different kind of warmth yeah. for yeah, Filipinos right. in really, any yeah. other country that I've been to. So I would, you know, mm. regardless of it can get annoying with the staring, but. For the most part, it's like, you it's, take the it's just, it's bad, different, there's yeah. There's a lot of good here. There's a lot of good, yeah. yeah. I can definitely say that. You, you know, it, I was saying, that was my first trip here. Mm -hmm. Later trips, oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I kind of look forward to the friendliness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, you I get, were used to it. Once I got used to it, yeah. and maybe once I understood it a little bit better, yeah. that it wasn't the same context mm -hmm. that I was yeah. coming from, you know, then, then it was like, okay, it was like a nice, pleasant thing. It was like... Slipping into a warm bath, you know? okay. it felt comfortable, yeah. it felt nice, yeah. it felt like, oh, yeah. okay. You, at first you're surprised by the heat, but then afterwards you get used to it, it feels good. Yeah. Right. So well, well, how about now that you've been here quite a while, like, how do you feel about the, the warmth in the Philippines? What's good to say? What's good to say? You guys are asking too many questions. I didn't ask any questions. You know, it's funny. <laughs> at least in Manila, you know, I, I, don't, I don't go out in Manila very much anymore. Um, and... Manila has changed so much mm -hmm. in the last 20 years. Okay, it's 20 years, all right? <laughs> in the last 20 years. Um, that, like, I, maybe there are a lot more foreigners, so it's less mm -hmm. unique. And so people are just people. Mm -hmm. you know, you know. Mm. In Manila. In Manila, in Manila. Yeah. So I, I honestly, like, I, going out the street then versus going out the street now is different experience hmm. yeah no I noticed that as well you like know. growing up as well here I guess my, my last question is I don't want to like put any pressure but I'm curious like if someone would do like a, a poll for you like America versus the Philippines which one would you say now is better or maybe your preferred living destination where would you rather it's actually living Well, obviously, I'm living here now, so I, I prefer it, right? I have, I, I, at one point, you could say I stayed because my kids were still in school, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but now that they're not, I could have left a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, it, again, it, it's part of the, the, the Philippines has changed a lot over the last 20 years. Um, a lot of the things that I was missing as in, like, I couldn't find items here, couldn't get certain things here. I can get them now. Yeah. Mm. And it's not just like one source; it's like multiple sources. Mm. So I can get, I can get the food I want. I can get the materials. I can get the work equipment I want. Mm. You know, be before I used to do these trips to the states just to buy computers of the right. Yeah, yeah. You know, as much power that yeah, I yeah. needed because locally yeah. I couldn't find it. They only had like a limited supply. And so I used to do all these trips to the States before to buy stuff, to bring it back. Mm. And I, did, I haven't had to do that in a long time. If you look at the English language, you know, we, we tend to say, okay, that, that's Australian English, mm -hmm. that's American English, mm -hmm. because they, they, they took the, the original language was adapted locally and they've changed things, they've added words, they've, they've done things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Well, you know, that's happened here as well. There's Filipino English here, yeah. meaning 
there are words used here that you wouldn't find in other English speaking countries. They're correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They're correct words. And there's some words that have been, in, you know, sort of invented here that have been added backwards to the dictionary. Yeah. You know, mm. like, like on the news, I remember hearing, you know, oh, you know, Becca is uh, vice presidential. And I'm like, presidential? <laughs> what? Is that a real word? You know, I couldn't figure yeah, it out, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. But yeah, I, 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 there is a thing, it's Filipino English. You know, they, they've taken English and they've adapted it. It's yeah. become, mm. there's a local version of English here. Yeah. So I would say English is almost, you know, Filipino English, sorry. <laughs> Did that reach you? Uh, it's, it's almost uh, another local dialect at this point. That's a great point. Yeah. Yeah, that's Plus, I, I have plenty of nieces that, sorry girls, that, <laughs> that, that, that speak Taglish. They, yeah. yeah they, and I've yeah. seen them be challenged to like, okay, for the next 10 minutes, they speak speak only Tagalog, Tagalog yeah. no English words, and yeah. they can't do it. Yeah. But you would con they, they would definitely be considered Filipino. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's like the trend they, here they in Manila. Speak pure Tagalog. In, in yeah. Manila. The parents would rather like have their kids speak English and Tagalog and not be necessarily fluent in Tagalog, but at least have you know. I mean? Tagalish. I yeah. Mean, and that's yeah. the trend. I don't see anyone is wrong or right. I think yeah. that's just up to it's you. It's up to you. It's up to your opinion. Up. Yeah. yeah but people, you have to be more accepting. Yes. <laughs> the world is getting smaller. <laughs> One reason. Uh, as always with this podcast, we, we like to open up a dialogue. So if you guys have your own thoughts on this subject, mm -hmm. please make sure to leave them down in the comments below and we'll make sure to read and respond to them. Yeah, and if you like this content and if you want to see Joe again, just let us know. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Subscribe. It's right there. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much Joe, for joining us. We really do appreciate it. Sure. <laughs> Yes. And yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Kanan kaliwa derecho. But it, actually, uh, Ch Chase's mother and I were on a TV show a, a while back, and they had Filipinos married to foreigners on the show. It was a show called. Moms or mothers, I think on GMA or something. And um, one of the things they challenged, the, the, there were four of us, four couples, and one of the things they challenged the four husbands to do was, okay, there's like a, a quiz thing, okay. They gave us each a whiteboard, a little, little tiny whiteboard, and it said, what is, uh oh, you're on a jeepney and you want the driver to stop. What is the what? What would you say in Tagalog to make him stop? And it starts with a P. And so everyone else is like writing down, writing down, writing down. I had no idea. I had none. I was just like, so I wrote my answer anyway. <laughs> so they went and what is it? Para. para. So para, para, para. And then they said, okay, Joe, what's what's your answer? And I said, I don't want to do it. <laughs> I said, no, no, hold it up. I'm like. <laughs> so the two hosts, they're like, come on, hold it up. So I, I held up my whiteboard, and on it I had written, psst, hoy! <laughs> that works too, right? Then that work starts with a P. It starts with a P, and it's Tagalog, and it's like, hey, stop the jeepney. I have to get off. Psst, hoy! Uh, anyway. <laughs>